parents sometimes, children, they persecute the parents. But the parents standing firm and saying, in this home, in this house, these will be the standard of righteousness. In this house, these will be the practice. It might be on some simple, simple things like dressing. It might be on some simple, simple things that this home, this house will not have all the gadgets of the world. The television. It might be on this, on that. And then the children will bind up themselves and then they are going to say, if this is going to be so, we're going to make life inconvenient for the parents. You know, persecution comes in various ways. But we're told in verse 22, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure unto the end, I will endure to the end. He that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Let's look at John chapter 16. Who are the persecutors today? Because Nebuchadnezzar is not here to persecute you. Who are the people that may persecute you, that may stand in the place of Nebuchadnezzar? We're looking at John chapter 16, verses 2 and 3. They shall put you out of the synagogues, religious people. You are going to that church before, and uh, you discover that they were not preaching salvation. Now you've come to know the Lord as your personal Savior, and you are not going there anymore. And those priests, and those preachers, and those prophets, then they begin to persecute you and the people of that synagogue and that church. It says, they shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth service to God. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. Because they don't have salvation. That's why they persecute. I'm looking at John chapter 15 verse 18. All through to verse 20. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you are of the world, the world will love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. The persecutor here is the world, the worldly minded people. Because we don't want to take part in their parties. We don't want to take part in their idol worship. We're not taking part in their fashion. We're not taking part in all the things they delight in. The people of the world. And because we say we're going to please the Lord. And we're not going to please the men and the women of the world. Therefore the world will hate you. Remember verse 20. The word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me they will also persecute you. Yes, they will persecute. They are the people of the world. They are worldly people. Worldly minded people will persecute heavenly minded people. Galatians chapter 4, I'm reading verse 29. Galatians chapter 4, and we're reading verse 29. Here it says, But as then he that was born after the flesh, persecuted him that was born after the spirit so it is now that's the description of persecutors the people that are still of the flesh they're not of the spirit anyone you see persecuting a believer persecuting a child of god that's of the flesh it's not born again and the works of the flesh will heal you he said as it was at that time, even so, it is now. He that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit. Even so, it is now. Acts of the Apostles chapter 13. They persecute us today. Acts chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 46. Then Paul and Barnabas watched bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing ye, ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. The Jews didn't accept the word of God. And Paul the apostle became bold. He said, now, you are the one 
that have put salvation away from yourself. And because you have rejected eternal life, you have rejected heaven, you have rejected the Savior, you have rejected the Lord, we are turning to the Gentiles. Verse 47, for so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee, to, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for the salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles had this, they were glad and they glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to have eternal life, believed. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. But the Jews stirred up the devout honorable women and the chief men of the, of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coasts. Who are the persecutors there? The jealous people, the envious people. They rejected the truth. They rejected salvation. And so Paul and Barnabas said, we're not going to be wasting our life and wasting our time. But the people that do not want the truth, all right, since we have rejected it, we turn to the Gentiles. And so they went to the Gentiles, and the Gentiles were so happy. They were so excited. And they received the word of life, and they became saved. When the Jews who rejected the gospel, and they rejected eternal life, when they saw that the Gentiles got what they didn't have, they were jealous, they were envious, and the jealousy and the envy led them to persecution. You see, when people persecute, maybe you have something they, they don't have. And because you have something they don't have, that, that's the reason why they persecute. The jealousy leads them into that kind of persecution. Second Timothy chapter 3. In Second Timothy chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 12 all through to verse 14. Second Timothy chapter 3, what do you mean from verse 12? Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer what? Persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Who are the people that persecute? Evil people. Good people never persecute. Saved people never persecute. And the righteous people will never persecute. Daniel did not persecute Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Never. Shadrach did not persecute Meshach and Abednego. Never. It's the unbeliever. It's the wicked people. It's the evil people. It's the seducers that persecute. If you find anybody persecuting another person, that's an unbeliever. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned that and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Now that we know the people that persecute, you know the reason why they persecute? Because we reject what they say. I want you to come back to Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. And then you will see what happened here. And how Nebuchadnezzar handled the matter. How he responded and reacted to the thing that was happening. Daniel chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 19. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. And the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore, he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times hotter, more than it was wont to be heated. And that, that's the persecution there. And why did he persecute them? Why did he throw them into the fire? Well, because they wanted to serve their God. They didn't steal. They didn't commit adultery. They didn't commit fornication. They didn't embarrass the king in any other way. And they didn't hurt him in any way. They were good people, righteous people, believing people, faithful people, uncompromising people, non-conformists in the land. And that angered the king. That's all. That's all that angered him. They were good people, righteous people. They were pure people. They were people that were devoted and loyal to the God of heaven. And it's this, that devotion and loyalty to the God of heaven that made Nebuchadnezzar angry. Let me show you how it happens to other people in First Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19. I'm reading verses 1 and 2. 
First Kings chapter 19, verses 1 and 20. He had told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. All that Elijah had done, you know the story. What did Elijah do? He prayed. Should we persecute somebody for praying? What did Elijah do? He stopped three and a half years of farming by his prayer. What did Elijah do? He brought the nation back to God. If God be God, worship him. If Baal, worship him. What did Elijah do? He prayed and fire came down from heaven. What did Elijah do? He stands out, false worship. Baal worship. Out of the land. That's all he did. It was to seek the glory of God. And that is why persecution arose. You see, in your own life, when you're standing for righteousness, you pray, that's what they don't like. And then you stand for the truth, that's what they don't like. You exalt the glory and the majesty of the God of heaven, that's what they don't like. And you glorify the living God, the most high God, that's what they don't like. That's why they persecuted Elijah. And it says, and he have told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with that, and with that, how he had slain all the, all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me. And more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow, about this time, chapter 21 of 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 21 verse 2, and he have spake unto neighbors, saying, Give me the, the vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of hers, because it is near unto my house. And I will give thee for each a better vineyard than it. Or if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of each in money. And Nabal said unto Ahab, The Lord forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. That's why they devised the means by which they were going to persecute him. That's all he did. That's all he did. He said, That's my inheritance. I'm not going to give my inheritance that I got from my father. I'm not going to give that to you. That's it. That's all. And that's why Jezebel and Heab conspired together. And then they wanted to get rich of the man. You have property. You have a house. And somebody says, can you sell the house? I'm sorry. I inherited this. This is what my heavenly father has given me to inherit. I'm not going to give it up. That's why they persecute. That's all. And God has given you. He's given you life eternal. He's given you some position. He's given you certificate. He's given you some good things in life. And then they want to take it away from you. You say, no. This is the inheritance from my father. I'm not going to give up this. That's why they persecute. Look at our girls, our daughters in the school. One boy says, give me your body. Hey, no, this is the temple of God. I'm not going to give my inheritance. I'm not going to give my purity unto any boy. I am for the Lord. That's why they persecute those daughters. And then a boy is, you know, walking with the Lord. And in this, these girls, they say, I want to be your girlfriend. And I want you to defile your body. And the boy says, never. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. I'm not going to give my purity. I'm not going to give the holiness that Jesus Christ purchased on the cross of Calvary. I'm not going to give that to any girl or any boy. That's why they persecute them. And that's the reason they still persecute today. If you know your inheritance, if you know your right, if you know your possession, if you know what God has given you, and the people of the world, they want that thing, and they want to just make it like rubbish and trample it on the ground, and you say, no, I'm not going to give that to anybody. That is why they persecute. But it's the persecutors that will suffer. Because the Lord will stand with us. If you are a non-conformist and you'll not bend, you'll not bow to the wishes of the enemy. The Lord will stay by you and the Lord will keep you in Jesus' name. But look going to the New Testament now. Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. We're looking at verse 17, Mark 6, 17. 
For Herod himself had sent forth and laid hold upon John and bound him in prison for Herod's sake. His brother Philip's wife, for he had married her. For John had said unto Herod, It is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. That's all he said. What's wrong in that? That's good counseling. That's good counseling. Just because of counseling him, Herod, how could you do that? Your brother, Philip, are you not of the same parents? And then you take his wife, do unto others as you want them to do unto you. You wouldn't have loved it if he had taken your wife, would you? That's all he said. That's all he said. It is not right for you. It is not lawful for you to take your brother's wife. Therefore, Herodias had a quarrel against him and would have killed him. But she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that was a just man. He knew. He knew he was a just man and unholy and observed him. And when he heard him, he did many things and heard him gladly. But you know, it's because of preaching the truth and standing for the truth. That is why the persecution came. I'm looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, I'm looking at it from verse 19. What happened here is that Paul the Apostle eh, was going, or Silas. And then there was uh, this lady that had a familiar spirit, a spirit of divination. And then she was crying after Paul and Silas, saying, These are the men of God who show unto us the way of salvation. But Paul the Apostle knew that these were the work of an evil spirit. And therefore he turned and said, Let that evil spirit come out of her. And eventually, uh, that lady was delivered. Let us look at it in, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 18. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Look at what follows in verse 19. And when a master saw, that the hope of their gains was gone. They caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrate, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. Well, if you read on, that's how the persecution came. Why? It tells us in verse 19, when they saw that the hope of their gains was gone. That's why they persecuted them. The hope of their gains gone. You are walking in a place, and in that place where you are walking, before you came in there, uh, the people, well, if they say they are going to buy something, uh, somebody will go out, they call them various names, they call them, say, maybe a purchase officer or whatever. And then as they go out, uh, something that is about 100,000 naira, they come back and bring a receipt of 800,000. On just that single deal, they want to make 700,000. And then you come in there, uh, you appear to have been working in another place before you came to this new company. And then you see what they are saying. All these exorbitant receipts say, no, it cannot be so. You go to the director and say, Director, if we're spending like this, this company is not going to move forward. And so eventually they say, Do you know where they sell this, where they sell? Yes, I know. And then you go and buy it. They used to bring, uh, you know, 900,000, 1.3 million receipts or whatever. And now you come back and it's just uh, about uh, 123,000. And then you have the receipt for it. And the same quality of what they have been buying before. And then they now say, okay, uh, it looks like you know to make a good deal, a good bargain. And now they shift you to that section. You are now the purchasing officer. And you are going up and down buying those things. You know what? The other people will see that the hope of their gains is gone. And because of that, they will persecute you. And they, they see all manner of things about you. If you are not, uh, you know, wise and careful, they might even go beyond just talking about you. And they might do some terrible things because of money. And because you have taken their hope of gains away from them. That's why they persecute. 
you know, it's because we're standing for righteousness. It's because we stand faithful and we say, no, we're not going to cheat our company. We're not going to cheat our place of work. That's where we're getting our salary. We're going to be faithful. And that is what makes them angry. But whether they are angry or not, we stand for righteousness. And we're going to keep on defending the righteousness and the glory of God anywhere we find ourselves in Jesus' name. I want to tell you something. There are some believers now. They are they're now cringing. And they have crawled into their kind of shed. Because they try to be faithful. And when all those people saw that the hope of their gain is gone, and they persecute them a little, and say, oh, I don't want you to get into trouble. After all, it's not my money. If they are taking the money from the company, if they are taking the money from, you know, all those people, and they are making all the unlawful gain, that's their business. And then you keep quiet. Because now they have conquered, they have silenced you. You are not like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You are terrified. You are trembling. You are intimidated. You are fearful. You are frightened. That's why you are no more standing. If you were like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you say, I don't care what they say. I don't care what they do. I don't care how they feel. This unlawful gain, as long as I'm in this company, it will stop and it will stop. And eventually, whatever their persecution, the Lord will exalt you and promote you. We're going to point number two now. We're looking at the protection. I'm saying the Lord will protect you. And the Lord will preserve you unto his eternal glory in Jesus' name. Point number two, the protection of new creatures in the fairy furnace. We're looking at Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. The protection of uh, new creatures in the fairy furnace. In Daniel chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 23. It says in verse 23, And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound in the each of the midst of the burning fairy furnace. Then, Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, and he rose up in haste, and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? Then answered and said, he answered and said, unto the true king, he answered and said, Lo, I see. I see who? For me, walking in the midst of the fire. And they have no hurt. Nebuchadnezzar, you see yourself, you thought you could hurt them. I'll hurt you. I'll kill you. I'll destroy you. I'll persecute you. If you don't stop taking your stand for righteousness and holiness and being firm and steadfast in this.